Okay, in this video, we're going to do number three from the 2022 Calc AB and Calc BC exams. They had the same problem, number three. It's going to be a problem where you're given a graph of the derivative and asked all kinds of questions about it. So let's see what we can do. Let f be the differentiable function with f of 4 equals 3. On the interval from 0 to 7, the graph of f prime, the derivative of f, consists of a semicircle and two line segments, as shown in the figure. All right. We want to find f of 0, find f of 5. This is a fundamental theorem of calculus problem. So to find f of 0, what I'm going to want to do is take the value that I know, which is f of 4. And then uh, because 4 is bigger uh, than 0, I'm going to have to subtract the integral from 0 to 4. Like normally, you would say that the integral from 0 to 4 is... The, z the integral from 0 to 4 of f prime is f of 4 minus f of 0. But since we know f of 4, we want to go backwards to f of 0. We have to subtract off that definite integral. And now this is kind of an area problem. So uh, that semicircle has a radius of 2. A circle with a radius of 2 has an area of 4 pi. Um, I don't know. But then we're taking, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, that's weird that I wrote, like, the wrong thing there. Um, I should have written uh, negative 2 pi there. I'm going to fix that. I'm going to try to fix that. The full, uh -oh. the full circle would have had an area of 4 pi. This is half of it, so this is 2 pi, and we're below the axis, so negative 2 pi. All right, so apologies. Hopefully this goes better going forward. I'm pretty sure it will. We'll see. Um, so f of 0 is going to be 3 minus the negative 2 pi that we found, and so that's just going to be 3 plus 2 pi. So that's f of 0. Now next we need to find f of 5. f of 5 we know f of 4, so we're going forward this time. So that's going to be f of 4 plus the displacement from 4 to 5, so plus the definite integral from 4 to 5 of f prime of x dx. All right, and then I'm going to again look at my graph. This is uh, half of the square that has an area of 1, so that area is going to be 1 half. And uh, so we're going to say f of 5 is 3 plus 1 half, which is 3.5 or 7 halves, whichever one you want to use. All right, let's take a look at point, part B. Find the x-coordinates of all points of inflection of the graph of f on 0 to 7 and justify your answer. All right, so this is the graph of f prime that we are shown, which means all of the places that f prime goes from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing are the points of inflection. So at x equals 2 and at x equals 6, I'm going to use a slightly different justification, though, because I prefer to use this. So I'm going to say f of x has point of inflection at x equals 2 and x equals 6. My reasoning is going to be because f prime um, has relative extrema at those values. That's the easiest way to justify it. Otherwise, I'd have to say because f prime changes from decreasing to increasing or increasing to decreasing at those points. Both justifications are good. I just prefer this one where I talk about relative extrema. I really like that justification. I use it whenever I can. All right, let's take a look at the next one. Let g be the function defined by g of x equals f of x minus x. On what intervals, if any, is g decreasing between 0 and 7? Show uh, the analysis that leads to your answer. All right, so um, I'm going to have to find the derivative and then figure out when the derivative is negative, right? Because that's how you figure out when something is decreasing. So g prime of x is going to be f prime of x minus 1. So if g of x is decreasing, I would need g prime to be less than 0. So I need to figure out what's going on there, right? g prime is less than 0 would mean that f prime is less than 1. So now I need to look at the graph and figure out where f prime is less than 1. So if I go to the graph, I'm going to add in the line at y equals 1 because I have the graph of f prime, I just need to know where this graph is less than 1, and now I can visually see it, right? This intersection point is 5, 1, and until I get to that intersection point, f prime is below 1. So that's the region on which g is decreasing, so now I'm just going to write that up. I'm going to say that g is decreasing on the interval from 0 to 5, and then my reasoning for that is going to be because g prime is less than 0 on that interval. So I did the analysis, though, right? You can see I, I showed g prime is less than 0 implies that f prime is less than 1. That's my reasoning there. 
Um, so I would be showing all of this work. Obviously, when I do these problems, I show exactly what I would show on the AP exam if I was taking it. So all of this would be my work. Let's take a look at the next part. For the function g defined in part c, so that was um, g of x is f of x minus x, find the absolute minimum value on the interval from 0 to 7, justify your answer. So we need the value, we don't just need the coordinate. Um, so let's see if we can figure this out. So g of x is definitely a continuous function. So I'm going to say g of x is continuous. Uh, because it's continuous, the absolute minimum is going to occur at either an end point or at a critical point. And the reason that that is true is the candidates test. So you don't usually need to name the candidates test, but I'm naming it anyway. So by the candidates test. All right, now, uh, we already know that g prime is f prime minus one, uh, but we need the critical points, right? So we need to know when that is equal to zero. That's equal to zero, we could visually see, um, because we did the work in the previous part, at x equals five and at x equals seven, right? That's where those intersect each other. That's where f prime is equal to one, um, which will make g prime equal zero. So at x equals five, x equals seven. Now I need to figure out uh, the values at the endpoints and at the critical points. Now there's an alternative solution that's actually probably a little easier, and that would be that you just show that g prime changes from negative to positive at x equals five. And if it's the only critical point, then it must be the absolute minimum as well. But I'm gonna use a candidate's test, I'm invested, uh, I'm going to make a table. I got x, I have g of x. We found most of what we need in previous parts, right? We need f of 0 uh, minus 0. But f of 0 from part a was 3 plus 2 pi. So that's going to just be 3 plus 2 pi. For f of 5, we found that in part a as well. We got that that was um, f of 5 is 3.5, but then minus the x-coordinate, so minus 5. So that's negative 1.5. And then at seven, we have to actually do some work, right? So it's going to be, remember f is uh, three plus the integral from four to seven. So I'm gonna do three plus the integral from four to seven. Basically I've created another problem here where I need to find f of seven. Um, so I'm gonna find f of seven by doing three plus the integral from four to seven of f prime. And then I'm gonna subtract seven because I have to subtract x. So this is going to be uh, that region right there is 2, and that region is 1.5, so 3.5. So it's 3 plus 3.5, and then minus 7. So that's 6.5 minus 7, that's negative 0.5. And so I'm going to say, therefore, the absolute minimum is negative 1.5 at x equals 5. That's the entire question. So I hope you found this helpful, and good luck.